lie. <laughs> oh, that I'm going to have to cut that bit out now. <laughs> it's all good. Welcome back to the GP Productions podcast. Okay, welcome back to the show, and I've got a special guest on the show today, a man that you will know from the TV screens, both in movies and television itself. It's Mr. Michael Bailey-Smith. How are you doing today, sir? Very good, sir, and I have to comment, uh, commend you on your your opening music theme. It's, I was like, I was bobbing my head there. I was doing a little bit of headbanging, and it was good. Yeah, my friend Kevin put that together for me, and actually, by the time this video comes out, it will be your birthday, and he'll be over in England playing at a festival, so... Love Best it. of luck to him and happy birthday to you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, I just was mentioning off camera, give the boys a shout out. I seen you on the on the slab podcast with uh Greg and Carl. Mm -hmm. Brilliant show, brilliant guys. And I believe you're coming to visit to Ireland potentially now. Yeah, yeah. No, next year. So we'll see what happens. There's a you know, there's talk of me showing up at a horror, you know, festival, you know, God willing and uh you know, good luck. We'll see what happens. And if I do, I'm definitely stopping in Ireland. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually had um, <clears throat> I had a guy that I done a podcast with. He's a wrestling author. Um, he was on my podcast maybe last year, mm -hmm. and he was um, he was in the UK doing some book signings this year, and he stopped over to Dublin a couple of weeks ago. And we done a show in person. I don't really get to do that many things, that, yeah. that many shows in person, but it was nice to actually be able to kind of sit down with someone in the same room and do a show as well but he stopped off in ireland because he's got friends here and he wanted to have a couple of beers and chillax before going home so highly recommend you coming here have you been here before uh i have not i've been to uh, london quite a few times and you know places around that but not been to ireland i'd like to go so that's one of my goals that's one off the bucket list i want to do for sure yeah so. yeah excellent so you've got an interesting story with about how you kind of got into the film and TV world. But if you to rewind back to your childhood, was it something that you were ever interested in? Oh, uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, in, uh, I think in grade school and high school, I was afraid to get in front of anybody to talk. I think that's really crazy. Uh, and then, you know, I did. I did pretty well in high school when it comes to playing football and American football, of course, not soccer. Yeah. Right? We would call it in America, but uh, American football. And uh, and so, but my I finished my high school in the Middle East in Iran, and so I didn't. And you know, my parents, you know, I was the oldest of six kids, and there was there's no no one scouting you to play college football. And so, for me to get to to college, I had to figure out a way to do that. And for me, it was to join the military. So I joined the military, became a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division, which is a pretty prestigious unit, uh, pretty elite. Uh, and I did that because I always wanted to push myself and uh, put myself out of my comfort zone. And that's what I did. Did that for three years. Uh, while I was in, I got the GI Bill that allowed me to pay for school. And uh, and so, yeah, I, I got out and I had a chance to go to the University of Notre Dame, which I didn't do. Uh, because I knew that I would probably ride on the bench for a while. So I chose to go to Eastern Michigan, a smaller school, still division one school, but a, a smaller school. And I started for four years uh, as an offensive lineman. And then uh, when I got to be a senior, I was a preseason All-American, Sporting News All-American, all these things like that. Ended up going to, uh, got an opportunity with the Dallas Cowboys professional team. Yeah. Got into camp with them, uh, blew my knee out uh, in camp. Um, and went back and finished my degree. I was pretty depressed after that, but I fought through it 
and uh, got into bodybuilding pretty heavily and moved out to California, ended up chasing some girl out there to San Diego. That lasted about a, less than 30 days. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, it's funny. I had hair back then and she dumped me for some guy who was bald. I'm like, what the hell? So anyway, it's, it's pretty funny. But I ended up when I was there, uh, very blessed. I met uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve Henneberry, who ended up later becoming an American gladiator. But he dabbled in uh, and, uh, acting in Hollywood and things like that. And so he said, hey, I'm going up to Hollywood to reach for this movie called Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. Why don't you come with me? Maybe you can audition. We'll go to Gold's Gym after, you know, and uh, train. That was the mecca of bodybuilding. I said, yeah. So I took the day off from work. Actually, my boss didn't allow me to. She, he, she says, uh, you can't take the day off. I said, well, I'm taking it anyway. And she goes, well, you're going to be fired. I said, that's fine. So I ended up getting fired and hopped in a car with the guy or with my buddy and we went up to, to Los Angeles and right there on Hollywood and Vine, you can't get any more Hollywood than that. I could see the, the, you know, the, the Hollywood sign in the Hills and everything and went in and he, my friend auditioned and they asked me if I wanted to audition. And I said, yeah. So I went in and uh, did it. And the director asked me if I could laugh like Freddy Krueger. And I gave out this big freaking scary laugh. And he said, that's awesome. And, that's how I got the job. And uh, I was pretty, pretty shocked by that. And next thing you know, about a week later, I was on the set with Robert England and uh, which is pretty cool. And he was super gracious, invited me into his trailer. We sat down and talked about how he played, Rob, you know, Freddy Krueger. And I played a bigger version called Super Freddy. And yeah, I had my first couple lines and I got my SAG card and uh, I was blessed. And the moment I got in front of that camera is when I said to myself, this is what I want to do. And so then I packed up my car. I had a Camaro uh, with IROC with T-tops and uh, drove up to Los Angeles. Didn't have the place to stay. And I, I lived in my car for about a week or so, just trying to figure out I had hardly any money. Um, and uh, found a crappy apartment with some creepy dude, slept on the floor in the back room and feel like <laughs> a decent job. And, and then uh, all the money I spent, uh, all the money I made at my job, it was at a, a computer test laboratory place. I spent on acting classes, and just like I did playing football, I trained super hard, and uh, took improv, scene study, cold reading, audition technique, everything I could to become a better actor, and learn the process. There's a whole whole system and whole game you got to play to be successful, and so I I did that. I was very focused. And uh, I wasn't going out partying. I was in the gym training my butt off or I was studying or working. And that's what I was doing. And uh, it started working, man. I got, you know, I, I got lucky. A lot of other big guys. I was a big dude. I was like 275, you know, like 90% body fat. I was pretty, pretty big dude. Other big guys started when I did just thought because they were big, that's all they could do. And some were natural actors, but I really wasn't. But I busted my ass. And, and so when I walked in audition, I was... I was pretty good and yeah. I cleaned up. I got almost every role that I auditioned for. So it was pretty cool. And that's how I, I've done over 60 films, about a hundred episodes of television and commercials and video games and uh, print work, uh, just tons and tons of stuff. I have action figures. Now I have people with tattoos of me on their body, which is very strange. But, <laughs> yeah. So um, all good stuff. And uh, yeah. just, just a fun ride and, and very, very blessed for sure. Yeah. Do you think if you didn't make that decision to say to your boss, you know, fuck you, I'm going, going to this audition, would you be where you are now without doing no. that in that exact moment? No. It, it, that's a, that's a great point. And that's something that, that I impress upon the people that I, they're friends of mine, uh, people that I don't even know. I, I talk to them or my sons, I have two, two boys that are older and hugely successful already. Um, that I, I, I get emotional when I talk about this. And if I start getting teary-eyed, please don't take offense or, no, no, no. <laughs> or, or, or think of me that I'm a weak guy, but uh, <laughs> I'm very passionate about this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in life, you're going to be given opportunities. There's two types of people. There's the one that's going to be afraid and just set back and let nothing happen and let someone else step up and make and take that opportunity. The other one's going to step forward and, and make it happen. And that's what happened to me. They, they could have easily, I mean, they came to me and said, hey, do you want to audition? I could have easily said no. And listen, I'm a kind of guy when I was in high school and in college, I was afraid to get up and give public speaking. I, I was really tough. I was nervous. I'd stutter and all these things like that. And so I just said, excuse my language. I said, fuck it. I'm going to go for it. And that's what I did. I walked in and 
just put myself out, out there. And I realized after a while that all they're going to do is tell you, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to get shot. You know, you're not going to, you know, nothing. You're not going to lose a limb. And so you just have to say, you know, fuck it and go in and do it and, and see what happens. And, you know, I got lucky and um, probably some of that was a little bit of talent, natural talent, but I, you know, I got, I got lucky and blessed and got that role. So um, mm. I just think that goes with anybody in any kind of, any kind of work that you want to do. Um, you're going to be presented with these great opportunities, man, you got to go for it. Unless it's like drug dealing or, working in porn or prostitution, maybe don't do those, but everything else we can go for it. Right. So, yeah. What is it? What is it about that red light going on then and being in your first movie that changed everything? Was oh. it the kind of, the, was it the final outcome? Was it just a kind of relief of getting it done and it not being, it not fucking up or what was it that just no, kind of said, this is what I want to do. Gosh, I have to tell you, there is nothing more exciting than, you know, um, than standing in front of a camera, all these people are around you and you have to perform. You, it's up to you and it, all the pressure, everything is on you. And I love that. I same thing, same thing when I played football and it was fourth and inches and there's some big dude across me say, he's going to kill me, my mother, my family, and anybody ever known he's going to be yeah. dead. I'm going to kill you on this play. I'm like, freaking bring it. Let's go. You know, I love that. And so the same thing as an actor, uh, I loved love that uh that uh that pressure and and you know performing and and then freaking after you get done you nail the crap out of it there's nothing better feeling going and i there's a if you go on face if you go on uh youtube there is a uh a video one of the behind the scenes uh i don't know if you remember and the hills have eyes yeah, uh, yeah. The character pluto I, bl I blast through this this uh plate glass door <laughs> And when I go through it, I have to take an ax and cut it across this way. It's a real pickaxe. And uh, when I come through it, I have to come through and the door explodes. And I, I do all these things. And it's pretty it is pretty technically timed. Now, I'm not a trained stunt guy, but I play football and like that. I'm an actor, right? So I went through that door and exploded. The director almost shit his pants on how great it was. <laughs> and the whole crew crew did it was great. And I got done and went, fuck, yeah, there is nothing better than nailing a scene, either when it comes to dialogue or being emotional, a scene or doing something physical. There is nothing better than that, except was for that maybe you know, sex, you know, that, <laughs> probably better but other than that. Yeah. Was that scene done in one take then? Yep. Yep. That was done Excellent. in one take. That was done. With, they have doing it. They just did one. And there's nothing better, too, than nailing a scene. And director director goes, you know, we don't need to do anymore. We're just moving on moving on so yeah. yeah and a lot a lot of people kind of have an advantage because a lot of actors i talk to that go into acting have mm -hmm. a background in we'll say theater or something like that and standing up in front of people you didn't have any no. experience like that in the middle in between the football yeah. and then the yeah. movies no yeah i didn't um but you know um yeah you just kind of you, you know you kind of learn al along the way and i got fortunate enough to do you know, enough work to, uh, to learn that. And then it's funny in the middle of my career, I did some theater, which was kind of nice. So I actually played this one. I did this one play called doing Judy. It was about, uh, Judy Garland impersonators getting killed. And I played this gay detective and uh, at the beginning I had to wear, you know, detective outfit and I had to wear some leather. Uh, and then in the end I had to dre I'd dress up in drag. So that was quite interesting. Let me tell you, I am the scariest drag queen you could ever imagine. So <laughs> I am very scary. <laughs> My, it's not for uh, you. No, with the wig yeah. and the pumps and the mini skirt. Yeah, I'm I'm, per, I'm pretty intimidating. Yeah. So, yeah. I think have, a lot you, of things, uh, yeah. have you ever have you ever got a script or if you what's the one thing like if, if you got a script mm -hmm. and you read it and you said, No, I'm not doing this movie, what would the reasons be for it? Um I've I've done it a couple times. Uh where it was something that it really comp compromised my my own morals, you know, and some of the things that I I didn't want to do, uh, you know, I that I've said told I've I told people no, I, I'm not I'm just not going to do it. So um, yeah, I'm not going to get into why. Just there's some things that I just I'm just not comfortable doing. So um, yeah, you know, and so anyway, but yeah, there's some a, couple, a few times, but other than that, I'll, I'll do anything. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I was just reading, like, you've been in so many different things, and I was just like trying to pick out maybe stuff that maybe people don't yeah. normally talk about. Obviously, we touched on Nightmare on Arm Street there, which everyone would talk about. But Men in Black 2, I see you're in as well. Um, how did that come about? Yeah, so uh, that it, that's a role that was right at the beginning of this of the movie. Yeah. It's uh, and it's a small role, but creep. You know, I normally wouldn't do something like that. But when Barry Sonnefeld, the director, calls my manager and says, "Hey, we'd love Michael for this dinky role. We know it's kind of small," and um, and so uh, and I'm like, "Hell, Barry Sonnefeld, I'll, I'll I'll just stand there for him," you know. So he's a pretty well known director, and and I got to work with Laura Flynn Boyle, and it's funny. The dialogue, I only have like, I had uh, like, th I think I had three lines and they cut one. And so before they filmed, and it's like, uh, the first one was, hey, pretty lady. And I lick her face like, you taste good. And there's this, there's another line before that. And then Barry walks up to me and filming goes, Michael, this one line just not working. And I said, uh, you know, I didn't, when I read it in the script, I didn't like it. So we're going to cut it. I said, Barry, I only have three lines. That's 33.33% of my dialogue. Come on. <laughs> And he was kidding, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, he was he was he laughed about that. But it it was it was great. It's a you know huge film, and and it's just nice to be a part of it. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a huge franchise like the like Marlon Street. Obviously, yeah, yeah. different genre, but uh, yeah. definitely a part of history as well. Yeah, you know, I agree completely. So um, yeah. no, it was great. It was great to work with Laura. Laura, um, it's funny because I had just I only uh, met her like five minutes before I did the scene. We're doing rehearsal and rehearsal i have to lick her face <laughs> and i was like laura i feel so strange you know i don't even know you and i'm just licking your face and she goes i kind of like that you don't know me it's kind of exciting you know so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of fun she said that so it was cool she's a nice lady yeah. and barry's yeah. too barry and I, you know, I got to meet uh um will smith and all that it was kind of cool so yeah yeah good stuff what did what what did you think of the the slap with will in april Will Smith. Yeah. It's crazy, wasn't it? I, I yeah. had just got to America when, when that happened. I was oh, in America. Wow. It was, yeah. I was in Dallas um, for WrestleMania this year in, in April. Okay. And I just got there. And when we got there, we turned on the TV. It was just absolutely everywhere. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know, you know. Part of me was thinking, is this yeah. staged, you know? Yeah, I did I too. I just I don't know. I first. I don't know. I not a yeah i i don't that seems pretty crazy to me you have to take a lot more there were those are just words i mean it'd have to be something physical for me to go and, and get up there and you know slap somebody it's just, words are just words you know a lot of times right you don't yeah. need to you know uh yeah when i was younger and immature and things like that i would if someone said to me you know hey go fuck yourself i'd go beat the crap out of them you know but now it's like dude it's like you know, like I always draw the comparison sometimes to like there's a Ferrari driving down the road, right? And you got this little car, you know, you could beat it, but he pulls up next to you and he's revving his engine. He wants to race. And then he just flips you off and just drives away because you're, quote, a pussy for not racing. You know what? I could step on the gas and freaking floor you. It doesn't matter. So why race? It doesn't make no sense. The same thing. You know, he's sitting there. Yeah, she's say, he's saying some words about it. So it's a joke. Relax. You know, I'm making billions. I make more than he does. Just go back and hop in your fancy car and drive home. Don't worry about it. Now, if it gets physical, different story. Yeah, then you know, we're gonna, you know, but yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah. I don't know. You were, yeah. I don't know either. It's it's all gone quiet now. It's only like it's amazing yeah. how things work. Like everything's a huge story, and then the next week it's kind of forgotten about. Really. Yeah, I think some people some people should sometimes think about before you do something. And I, I you know, I, sometimes there's a lot of times that I didn't think either. Right. So sorry, my cat's like jumping, just jumped on the, the desk here. It's all good. Um, but uh, uh, sometimes people should think about the repercussions of something you're about ready to do. So I think that's what should happen. So, yeah, no, I, you were I, in. Sir, <laughs> my cat's butts cat's in excited. Dude, you need to move. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, you were in countless television shows including x files yes. Malcolm in the middle would say but charmed was a big one for you and yeah you're in 18 different episodes of that that's kind of another staple of pop culture franchise isn't it as well did you enjoy your time <laughs> doing that yeah um yeah, sorry about i apologize for my cat he's he's, not, he's not, yeah no he has not he's not camera shy um yeah. 
Yeah, so I played five different characters on that show. It's pretty crazy. And I, I tr truly blessed, you know, um, this shows, you know, the, the, the ladies there uh, were great to me and nice. And everybody in the cast was, was really cool. You know, it's funny. You know, when I started that show, um, I, I played a, a guest star, uh, this Grimlock. And, was, and the episode was called All Hallowell's Eve. And yeah. And during that episode, I was doing a pretty good job, I felt. And then, but I had the, I had the AD or the um, uh, assistant director come up to me and he goes, Hey, Mike, I want to let you know the director said that you're probably one of the most talented actors he's worked with in the last few years. I'm like, Like me? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you know, and I'm like, I couldn't believe that. I said, I said, Yeah, you, I'm talking about you. I said, All right, thanks. And, uh, and so then later on, my manager calls me and says, uh, um, hey, guess what? They want you back. I said, great. For I said, well, wait, my my character dies. He goes, no, for this character called Belthazor. I guess the person they hire is not working out, and they want to replace him with you. And so that's what I did. I ended up doing that, and then I got brought back as Shax, who killed uh, Shannon Doherty off the show, and I got played the source. Um, then I played uh, another like a uh, head Grimlock at the end there. So yeah, it just just blessed, you know, to do that. I've, uh, I've been blessed throughout the career to where I'll end up doing a guest star role on something and they have me back. Like that happened on Nash Bridges. It happened on a TV show called Seven Days. It happened on a TV show called My Name is Earl. Um, yeah. A bunch of shows like that that I've just been, done a guest star guest star on it and then they liked me and then brought me back. So I'm pretty easy to work with. I'm an easygoing dude, and but I, I try to do good work and keep my mouth shut when I have to. And so, yeah. What's... Yeah. What, what's your favorite to do? Would it be record a TV series or record a feature length movie? You know, I don't, I like all genres. Um, I don't know. I, I tell you what, soap operas are hard because uh, there's so much dialogue you have. To, I've done a few soap operas and you have to, there's so much dialogue you have to know and memorize in a very short period of time. You know, for us, I'm, I normally just guest star on it, but they what they do on the soap operas um, they have this huge stage and then they have like this racetrack that's built around and the, and the camera, the sound crew, everybody's on this, like this big cart and it just moves around, goes from setup to setup to setup, set up in a big circle. And as a guest star, you're, you're only allowed one take. You got to nail really? it. So talk about pressure. Now the, the, the series regular people, you know, they can maybe mess up once. I normally do. And so I have, I have a lot of respect for people like that who has tons of dialogue and the pressure of doing that. Um, I used to have this crazy uh, way of thinking, which is very poor. It wasn't, wasn't correct at all. Um, I always thought that like soap opera actors or commercial actors were down at the bottom and then maybe TV and then movie actors were the pinnacle of acting. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, but having worked in all those different, uh genres uh different mediums i realized that sitcom actors are probably some of the best actors ever though yeah. the, how freaking good they are how spontaneous they are how um how much dialogue they have to learn in a very short period of time uh they're very very good and i've worked on a lot of movies where i've seen some lazy ass actors don't show up prepared don't know their dialogue like i'm like what are you doing as you know um and so it's disappointing sometimes to see that, but definitely, you know, after working all these different, different mediums, I, I, I really think that uh, probably sitcom actors are the, some of the best. And I've done some great sitcoms. I've done like uh, family matters, uh, uh, wings. Uh, I can't think just tons and tons of different sitcoms uh, between brothers. The last one I did was uh, blackish. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've done some really cool ones. I had, had a great time. So it's been good. Yeah. So have you, through this kind of Nightmare on Elm Street thing, it's kind of like once you're in the horror bracket, you you never really get over it. Have you been able to dabble into the convention world at all? Yeah, of course. Uh, mm. You know, it's funny. Everybody, when you go to the convention world, you know, and you're doing that, people know me from, you know, Hills of Eyes. They know me from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I've done episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, I did the fantastic, the original Fantastic Four with Roger Corman, uh, the one that got shelved. That's a cult, cult following. Uh, a lot of stuff with prosthetic work. You know, my face hidden and things like that. But that's only like maybe a third of my career. 
where the other 75% of it or whatever or more is, uh, has been, um, you know, without it, you know? And so yeah. but the people that know me and, and pe people aren't going to want my autograph for, you know, an episode of X files, maybe X files, you know, yeah. but I did that, you know, just whatever. So, uh, they want, they want, uh, the stuff from the Hills have eyes and things like that. So it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's been a blessing. And I, I, when I go to conventions and I sign autographs, I'm, I'm, I'm truly honored that anybody will want my autograph. So, um, yeah. it's, it's been pretty cool. What's the strangest thing you've seen at a convention? I always ask that to people. I think the strangest one is when there's a tattoo of me on their body. To me, how, it's, how, how many times has that happened? Uh, four, four or wow. five. Yeah. Four or five. I have people walking around with tattoos of me on their body, which, um, it's, the first time it was crazy. Uh, I, where was I at? I was somewhere in, I think it was in Kentucky or something like that. I was in a, uh, autograph signing and this guy walks up to me and he goes, Hey man, I'm like your biggest fan. I said, Oh, thanks man. I appreciate it. He goes, no, you don't understand. No, I'm really, I'm like your biggest fan. I'm like, all right, cool. No, no, you don't understand, man. I'm like, you know, it starts getting kind of weird. And then he's like, Oh no, I'm going to show you something. And I'm like, Oh, he starts reaching for his pants and he pulls up his shirt. And there's a huge picture of, Pluto from the Hills of Eyes, he tattooed on his shirt and I signed my name and uh, yeah, and he tattooed my name on his body too. So I felt really obligated. I felt like I needed to go home with him or something. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I know you felt like you should have bought him dinner or something. Yeah, I know. I was like, it was pretty. So that's not, that's more of a, I, I don't really see that as being weird. And no, it's just uh, yeah, mad, yeah. kind of mad, isn't it? Kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, it's fun though. And, and I'm, definitely honored when someone wants to do that so that yeah that i would play a role that would affect them so much that they would put a tattoo of themselves you know of me on their on their body because that stuff it does come off but it's painful so <laughs> yeah the horror the horror community is um is very loyal and, and i think very, yeah. very i love friendly it. as well I, yeah i love the fans that are the horror fans i, I do, and, and the comic book fans too like from the fantastic four i love all that so yeah. yeah, those conventions, it's always kind of such a good vibe there. Everyone's just yeah. there for the same reasons and uh, yeah. Yeah. very good. Um, in terms of yourself, have you got any upcoming projects that you can talk about? Yeah, so um, I've not been doing a lot of acting lately. What I have been mm -hmm. doing, and it's on purpose, I've been focusing on uh, two things. One is my I writing. So I uh, have been writing a tremendous amount. I've written ton of screenplays and I just had one option which is really great that's really hard to do and so I got that done and it's and it's uh, tentatively supposed to go into production next year but I know how that is with anything right you don't count on yeah. it until you see it on the screen but at least I, I am I got one step forward right and the other thing too is that um I have I am working for a tech company as well so um it's called Lexi it's a it's a startup and uh, invested a lot of my own money into that as well. So it's been been fun doing that as well. And I and I head up uh, the VP of worldwide sales for them. So I've been doing those two things. And every so often, you know, I'll get a movie offer that I'll go do and things like that. But it's been mostly focused on my writing and just doing that because that's one thing I would like to do. You know, my goal, uh, you know, with anything, you got to set your goals high. And if you don't. Mm -hmm then why even do it, right? It's like I always always remark when people like you inventor, interview some college coach or some professional coach, well, we just want to make the playoffs. What? Just make the playoffs? No, you want to freaking win, win the it. championship. Why would you want to play if you don't want to be the best, right? Just, just don't, yeah. you don't get us to show up, you know? And so the same thing as a writer, I, I would love to – my goal is to win an Oscar someday, you know, not someday. My goal is to win an Oscar, period. And so I'm working hard, you know, if I can write something great enough and, you know, and inspirational enough, you know, it might happen. We'll see. So Yeah. And without, without giving anything away, I know we're kind of running out of time here as well, but what, what kind of style yeah. pieces are you writing? Yeah. So I, I'm big into um, like action with, with, with a lot of uh, story behind it and emotional uh, weight to it. I love movies like Shawshank Redemption or The Green Mile. Um, I also like Aliens. You know, I like I love the second, you know, the, the sequel to Alien. I love that. Mm -hmm. Where I, I love those kind of movies, and uh, I also like Top Gun. I love I love those kind of movies too. I've watched Top Gun a million times. I also like Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of his first films. I love I love those kind of films. 
and so I, I write kind of in that genre. Um, I'll, I've written things from dramas to sci-fi to um, that's where I kind of stick in between sci-fi and drama is what I what I like to play in. So yeah, it's been good stuff. And this movie that I just got option is called My Good Boy. Uh, it's uh, it's about my time after the Dallas Cowboys um, and like some of the things I went through, you know, depression and and uh, and uh, just I got a little bit of trouble when I was in Detroit because uh, I went to school at Eastern Michigan. So, yeah. And just how someone can get out of that and kind of rise above all that. So excellent. Yeah. yeah well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Just before we wrap up, Michael, where is the best place for fans to find you on social media? Just uh, to keep track you know, of your appearances. Yes, yes. There's three best places, or of course Facebook. Um, I always like Facebook. I always like tell a great story. You know, I have a lot of great stories that I, you know, my experience of 30 years of being an actor. Uh, you know, great stories and experiences I've lived, and then also go Instagram and and uh, and Twitter, and just you know, Michael Bailey Smith. Uh, you'll find me one way or the other. <laughs> yeah. Absolute pleasure to talk to you, Michael. Yeah, Listen, sure. I might Thank be you. I might be seeing you next year over here in the Emerald yeah. Isle or in England. Yeah, I'll let you know, and let's uh, let's let's try to hook up. That'd be awesome. Yeah, right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Have a good one.